Welcome to the Noritz Routine Maintenance video. We will begin with the periodic inspection. Before you begin, please take caution to always disconnect electrical power from the unit and wait until the equipment cools before performing maintenance. The following steps should be performed in order to keep your Noritz running its best. Start by doing a visual inspection around the heater, looking for combustible materials that could be a future hazard. Listen to the heater and check for abnormal sounds during operation. Check for abnormalities in external appearance, like discoloration. Wipe the outside surface with a wet cloth, then dry the surface. Use a neutral detergent to clean any stains. Wipe the surface of the remote control with a wet cloth, making sure all connections are secure. Do not use benzene, oil, or fatty detergents to clean the remote. It is water resistant, but not waterproof. For DV condensing models like the one shown, remove the SV conversion kit piece from the intake and check for dust and soot in the exhaust. Use the end of a screwdriver to pop out and remove the screen. Check the screen for dirt and debris. It's always best to clean the screen with water and a brush to make sure that air can properly flow into the system. Use the brush and running water to thoroughly clean both sides of the screen. Cleaning the screen is important because a dirty screen is the most common cause for an error code 90. Make sure the screen is dry before returning the conversion kit to the intake. Check the pressure relief valve and make sure it does not have any leaks. Continue to check all other connections for any possible leaks and ensure that everything is connected correctly. Open the relief valve to make sure everything is in working order and that it turns off. If the pressure relief valve is leaking or dripping, it will need to be replaced. First, close the inlet water supply valve by turning the valve to the right. The valve should be in a horizontal position. Next, you will want to enter the home and turn on a few hot water fixtures, like the kitchen and bathroom sinks. With the bucket ready, remove the inlet and outlet drain caps on the isolator kits. Then, open up both drain valves. Be prepared for a bit of water to drain. Take the water drain valve with filter out of the inlet port. Clean the filter under running water to remove any debris. Use your fingers to thoroughly clean the filter. Make sure the filter is dry before reinstalling back into the inlet port. Replace the water drain valve with dry filter and close the drain plugs and replace the caps. Head back in and close the water fixtures you opened at the beginning. Open the water supply valve and check for any water leaks from the drain plug or water drain valve. Before we begin any internal maintenance, we will want to turn the gas valve off. You will also want to make sure the unit is still unplugged. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the front cover of the heater. Make sure to place all screws in a safe place for easy finding once maintenance is complete. Once removed, you will want to inspect the inside of the heater, looking for any corrosion or discolored parts. Start by detaching the white connectors attached to the flame rod and ignition plug. Remove the screws on the sides using a Phillips head screwdriver. Do not use power tools to avoid stripping the screws. Take extra precaution when removing as the gasket is extremely fragile and can easily tear. Carefully remove the flame rod and sensor. The flame rod and ignition plug can be cleaned with a Scotch-Brite pad or fine grit sandpaper. Do not touch the end of the probes that go into the burner with your fingers. Make sure there's no buildup on the probes. Next, disconnect the gas manifold connection from the wiring harness by pressing the top connector to release. To remove the C-clamp, hold the gas manifold pipe in place and pull out the clamp. Next, remove the gas manifold. Start by using a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the four large screws. Place the screw somewhere for safekeeping. You will notice that the manifold will loosen but will not fully release. 
Push up on the gas manifold pipe and remove the gas manifold to reveal the burner chamber. In order to get to the fan, we will need to remove the GFCI mounting bracket plate. Carefully push wires aside and remove the two screws. Once removed, gently pull the plate aside so it's out of the way. Disconnect the fan connection from the wiring harness by pressing the top connector to release. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the three fan screws. Place the screws somewhere for safekeeping. Once all the screws are removed, pull the entire fan motor and blades from its housing. If the fan is dirty or clogged with debris, you can clean it using a brush. Brush under the burner plates to remove any bugs or debris that have built up in the unit. Continue to clean the entire fan by brushing in and around the fan and all of its burner plates as many times as necessary. Use compressed air to remove any remaining particles. If it's really dirty, you'll want to soak it in a degreaser. The fan blade will need to be removed from the motor and completely dry before reinstalling. Take compressed air and blow out all of the components, ensuring everything is clear and clean. Repeat and blow out all areas as needed. The tankless has now been serviced and is ready to be put back together. Make sure to take your time placing all of the parts in place just as you pulled them out, but in reverse order. All maintenance information can be found in the Noritz Homeowner's Guide or downloaded at support.noritz.com. Thank you for joining us. If you have any additional questions regarding any of the Noritz products, please contact us at 866-766-7489 or visit support.noritz.com.